So my name is Don Coward. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Coventry Schools. And uh, the Chief is with me here. We're just going to give you some information about what transpired today. We'll take a few questions. And then, uh, you know, as time goes by, if we get any more information, we'll be able to share that out with you. So uh, in regards to a timeline of what happened at the school today and how this whole thing came together, um, right around 1145, the students were passing between classes. It was at the end of one of the lunch periods. And somebody was heard saying, um, he has a gun. Uh, that was uh, first reported by a teacher and then reported by a student and then another class of students um, in a location that's sort of in two where two different hallways come together. And so the school department uh, administration gathered that information right away so that they could uh, figure out what was happening. They put the school on pass restriction, which means they hold the kids from passing. Every kid stays with the teachers in the classrooms. Once they determined that there was probably uh, something that needed to go a little bit further than that, then we put the school on lockdown. And once we put the school on lockdown, then uh, the police personnel arrived on scene. So by uh, the, the report came at 1145. We did some investigating. We looked at the videos. We took statements from teachers and students. And by 12 o'clock, I don't have the exact time period because as this thing is evolving, there's not a lot of time to look at your watch, right? But as this thing was evolving, right around 12 o'clock, we were in lockdown. Um, I work out of the central office building. I was here by 1215, and by 1215, the full department, almost the full department from Coventry was here um, establishing their, um, their perimeter and, and the procedure that goes from there. I'll let the chief kind of pick up from that point, and then you know we can kind of tag team if there's any questions. Sure. My name is Frederick Heist, I'm Chief of Police and Coventry. So the police department arrived on scene and we set up a uh, unified command with the uh, Coventry Fire Department as well as um, the school administration and us. And during that time we uh, determined it was un we weren't able to identify who had been making the statements about the gun. So at that point we uh, decided we'd have a, um, we'd search the students to find out if anyone had a gun. So all the students were searched, the classrooms were searched, and belongings were searched. Um, at this time, we were unable to locate anything. There was no weapons found. Uh, so uh, students were, after they were searched, they were uh, put on buses and brought over to job lot for reunification with their parents, and or taken a bus to uh, their house. So I'm not sure if anyone has a question. Yeah, let me just add to that before we take questions. So part of Part of the unified command is that we make decisions together. So we were huddled together a few different times, and decisions change over time. So initially, when we started the uh, the searching of the classrooms, and there's 15, almost 1,500 kids in this building, um, a few hundred adults. So to, to to do a search person by person takes time, and it's in faci the facility itself is is large. So we had to make some decisions about how we secure the students who have been searched, and then make decisions on how we dismiss those students so that. Uh, once the kids have gone through that search process, we can get them off campus. And so what we did, which, which we all agreed was probably one of the best decisions we made, is we decided to make the job lot, parking lot, a staging area for parents, because parents weren't able to come up onto the property once we have locked down the, the, uh, the, the campus. So parents were instructed to go there, and then we were able to shuttle students to that location to meet their parents. Other students who had been already cleared to leave were able to go home on their regular bus at their regular time, and some students who were cleared to leave were able to drive home. Uh, they were escorted out of the building just to make sure that you know they got to their car safely and that nobody came back into the building. But some students did not get on the bus at the time that they were supposed to. Some kids didn't leave the school at dismissal time. Uh, our last student was cleared out of this building by four, and the last students were picked up or delivered out of the job lot parking lot by 4.30. So every, every student is home safe, which is, you know, obviously our priority and, you know, from our opinion, that's a success. It's a difficult situation, but when you get all the kids home safely and nobody's been hurt, that, that, that's um, a difficult situation that worked out the way it should. Can you tell us what the dividing factor was between students that were able to, you know, have their backpacks searched or have to leave here or go home? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so initially it was, it was a manpower thing. So the Coventry police were the first on scene. And so, um, and, and over time, and, and you know, they can explain more, but we had mutual support from other police departments. But initially, it was just the Coventry police. And when we first started our search, we were searching uh, the people in their bags. 
but that's labor intensive. That takes a lot of time. And when you, like I said, we have a lot of students. So to go student by student, bag by bag, takes a long time. So once we got a little bit more support on campus, we were able to search the students and leave the bags. And then the police department, with their mutual support, had people go to the rooms. We also had dogs on site who went to the rooms who could, um, and, and they could speak more about it than I can because it, it's, a, it's a police uh, canine unit. But they, they were able to use the dogs to, to smell for, for weapons. Um, by the end, we had so much support from the neighboring community and the state police that some kids were then able to leave with their bags because we could check students in bags pretty quickly at the end. How long did it take for the mm -hmm. lockdown to be put in place for parents to be notified that it was happening? Mm -hmm. So I think the, I, I can't tell you exactly the, the moment parents got emails. I will say to you um, with, with, the, with the unified command approach is the, the email is, is important, but not as important as making sure we're locked down and safe, right? So our first priority is to make sure all the kids are in the classrooms with the teachers, nobody's in the hallway, the campus is secure, nobody's coming in or out. But once we do that, we started drafting the email together. And as you can imagine, in a, in a hectic situation, the email evolves a little bit. And, and you, you don't want a situation where you're sending emails to really, really nervous parents, one after another in rapid fire. That just makes people more uncertain about how things are being handled. So it took us a little bit of time to draft that email. But once it was sent out, maybe 15 minutes, could have been 20. Uh, and you can quote me, you're the news, but I think it's, it, 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 was, it was relatively quickly cons considering the time constraints. Um, but then we also shared it on social media. We put it on our Facebook page, our website. We sent it through our parents' listserv. We also sent a text message out to parents who received text messages for, uh, instructing them to check their email. Was anything found during the search? You want to speak to there, there was no weapons found. Can you walk us through kind of the, the process, you know, what your officers did? Did they go room to room? Like, how did this work? So basically, we divide up the school in room by room. Uh, we, we had asked for assistance. Uh, Rhode Island State Police was here, Ward, Cranston, Situate, and, and West Greenwich assisted us. And we went room by room searching uh, students and uh, basically their uh, bags and things. How about yeah. lockers or anything like that? So we did not search the lockers, no. The dogs went through the area. I, I will say from a school department perspective, very few students use lockers. They carry their stuff with them. So uh, we assign lockers as needed and requested, and we have very few lockers assigned to students. Are you guys concerned? Because obviously several people heard this. He has a gun. Um, more than one pe people obviously reported that to you, like you said in the beginning. So what's to say that student doesn't come here tomorrow? Are you going to be taking any precautions for tomorrow's school day or anything like that? So tomorrow we'll have tomorrow morning we're going to have additional uh, police staff here also in the morning to be around. Do you know where, do you, have you guys been able to identify the student who said that or no? No, no. we have not been able to. No. Was um, this deemed to be a threat or did you just not know? So in this case, we didn't know what it is. We don't know what it is because we weren't, even, we weren't able to identify who said it. So as a precaution, we, we treated it the way we did to make sure everyone was safe and everyone went home. And just to be clear, the statement wasn't that the gun was in school. It was just that someone has a gun. He has a gun. Okay. So you didn't, basically you didn't know. We did not know. But the same, the same phrase was reported to us from a few different parties stated the exact same way, which you know raised our concern. It, what efforts are being made to track down and determine who, who said that? So the investigation doesn't stop here. We're going to be looking into it further, uh, speaking with maybe other students and things like that to see where what leads we can get out of this. Is the student body aware that whoever <coughs> said that to set off this chain of events that they're going to be held accountable, that they you want people I'm, to come I'm, forward? I'm sure they are aware, <laughs> yeah. We haven't communicated that, but there are consequences for actions, and this was very disruptive to uh, the community, not just to the school, to the whole community. So um, if somebody has been identified and we're able to uh, confirm that, then you know there are appropriate consequences. For just what, this is like yelling fire in a crowded theater. What, what is the penalty for a student? Let's just say you are able to. What is, what is the penalty? Yeah, I mean, typically there are suspensions out of school. Um, we can suspend students out of school up to 10 days um, before we have to find an alternate place for the, placement for them. But there's a lot of factors that go into a decision like that. You know, students' mental state, students, um, if they've already had suspensions. They, there's a lot of things we look at. It's, it's not, there's nothing black and white in the school department. There's nothing cookie cutter. But there's no legal consequences? Shouldn't there be legal there, consequences? There would be. Um, probably a disorderly conduct at, at the least not more than that. So I'm on Facebook Live right now. A lot of parents are concerned about the lockers not being searched. Will you guys maybe 
rethink that and do that for you know the safety and the peace of mind for people, or is that something you're not going to be doing? So they brought the dogs around, and the dogs were, were checking things. Um, I can speak to that a little bit more. So, can you get in front of the mic for us? Sure. Thank you. So, Captain Matthew Blair from Coventry PD. So, basically, the the level of search that was conducted was as thorough as we were able to do, and we would have gone further if we could have. The issue with the lockers was every student was gone, and many of the lockers that we would be interested in would be locked. So, what we did do was send ballistic dogs or dogs that are trained in the use or uh, detection of firearms to go through and check all those areas that we were unable to check in the way we would have felt would be most appropriate. Uh, we checked uh, cabinets, lockers in different classrooms, furniture, desks, everything we could check. We had upwards of 50 officers checking the entire school, and we did two searches. So I would say, as a parent, confidently to other parents that they can send their kids in tomorrow, confident the school's been as thoroughly checked as it could be. Can you talk about the lockdown procedure when students are in the classroom, one of the students I spoke with was telling me, you know, they were stacking up desks in front of doors and that sort of thing. Um, how well are they trained to do this and respond to this? Yeah, it's called Alice training. You know, we, as a school department, we work with the, uh, the police department. We train staff. Um, we even do uh, lockdown drills with students. It's, it's, uh, it's the response that we have taken to uh, keep kids safe. And, um, the kids did exactly what they were supposed to do, and so did the teachers. And by the way, you know, we had some nervous people on campus, and you know, uh, our teachers have to be um, congratulated and thanked for keeping their kids safe and 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 uh, and calm in class. This this lockdown was, you know, a few hours long. It wasn't a lockdown drill that lasts for 15 minutes and it's over. This was a significant amount of time to keep kids calm in a classroom. And we also have to, you know, thank our student body, the the kids who came through, um, once searched and then relocated to the auditorium for dismissal uh, were orderly. They listened to directions. Uh, there, were, there were no issues with, um, with discipline or students not following the procedures that we put in place. So everybody did what they were supposed to do. Any lessons you learned today, things you might uh, improve in the future? We debrief everything. You know, we, for, the, for the last 45 minutes after we announced that we were gonna speak to you folks, we've been discussing how we handle things. Um, and we'll probably debrief more as, you know, time and space gives you uh, a chance to reflect on how you handle things. I think we followed the lockdown process exactly the way we train kids to do it. We've been very fortunate that we haven't had to uh, do a real lockdown uh, often. So the fact that the, the students responded and the teachers responded appropriately. Uh, parents did exactly what they were asked to do as well. You know, they didn't come flooding here. They weren't demanding things that we couldn't give them. So the community did what they needed to do. But we're definitely going to debrief. You know, the unified command, though, is something we're all trained on. We know that there are certain things that are in the purview of the school department. There are certain things that are the fire department's responsibility and the police. So a lot of times when we're having conversations during this whole situation, we would defer to each other for each other's expertise. You know, the chief may say to us, how do you want to handle dismissal? And we may say to the chief, how do you want to handle, you know, uh, getting the kids out of the classroom and into the auditorium. So there's, there's you know, mutual respect and a lot of cooperation. There seems to be a little bit of a gray area of whether someone said something that they thought was true or just maybe said something that I guess they just said. So are, how are we looking into that? Are kids being asked to come forward if they know anything about what transpired today or? I'm sure there'll be further investigation at the school-based level and, and we have SROs who are gonna be here tomorrow and there'll be more investigation uh, with them. We also have school-based counselors that are going to be here to meet with kids who um, may have difficulty with coming in tomorrow. They'll be able to answer any questions and support them if they have any needs. And if anything else comes forward, then we'll, we'll follow up on that. But, you know, we have to err on the side of caution. Something was said. It was alarming. We have to respond. You know, you'd all be here except there'd be 20, 20 more of you if we hadn't responded appropriately and something uh, really horrific happened. So our responsibility is to take care of our kids, and as a community, that's what we did. You're confident there's, there's no weapon in the school that's, was it hidden or ceiling tile, or is this maybe open up that maybe there are ways to hide a weapon in the school? We had so many police officers here, and the experts from every single <laughs> agency around us, including the state police and their dogs, I can't imagine if there's anything in this building, but I guess, you know, Anything's possible, it's a big building, but you know, we have the right people in place to handle situations like that. 
I would agree. That we, we did the search. Um, we did not come up with anything. I feel confident that as far as our search went, that we, there was nothing located. Um, of course, there's something, somebody could hide something somewhere, but in our search, we did not locate anything. You said that students were searched. We're, just want to clarify, were staff searched as well? Yes. And, and escorted, you know, I mean, this was very, this was, you know, handled very uh, securely, you know, a, a teacher left a room and left her keys behind. And at the end of the day, she wanted to get her keys so she can go home. She was escorted down to her room by a police officer to get her keys so she can go home. And we, we handled this situation uh, as seriously as it, it, it's warranted. Was it just the bag search or the individual search themselves that were they wandered with? They were, they were given pat downs for weapons um, and their bags were searched. And at this point, no one has been arrested, cited, anything like that? No. If a student does know something, what's the best way for them to come forward? Is there a way for them to do it anonymously? <coughs> they know who may have said something? The best thing they could do is contact the school resource officer in the morning and let them know and we will, we'll take it from there. Or reach out to school staff if they feel more com uh, comfortable with that. Our school administration is um, very close to the student body. They they send emails, they speak to them on a regular basis. So we have a lot of administrators here. They did a phenomenal job today as well, who um, you know can speak to any student who has information. Matter of fact, that's how most of our situations get handled, right? Something happens, not something like this, but something happens, and then somebody's heard it or seen it and has told somebody else, and then we're able to investigate it and put it to bed. Can you guys bring in the SWAT team? We did not know. Maybe we'll take one more question and then we can wrap it. School tomorrow as expected. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.